Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen, and you're watching Goddess Kring. And I wanted to make a black and white video to distinguish this video from other videos that I have made recently. I wanted to do another video about why I love Bernie Sanders and a little bit about my spirituality and my idea about what God is and uh, what I think about the sacred. I wrote a book called Art, Identity, and the Sacred about the paradox of losing yourself, finding yourself by losing yourself in art and Taoism and how being in the present moment and a lot of what Eckhart Tolle says about being in the present relates to what I say in my book Art, Identity, and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen, which is available on my website, but that's another matter. But I will say that I love that also Joseph Campbell Look him up if you don't know who he is. He was criticized, Joseph Campbell, for um, taking, because a lot of people like to write books on comparative religion and they like to distinguish each religion from the other and talk about what's different about each religion and maybe celebrate the diversity, which can be cool and positive. But then when you think about it, spirituality and wisdom is supposed to be about unity. And they say unity through diversity. Well, the irony is that a lot of war, a lot of the excuse for war is blamed on some kind of religious idea that people deserve to beat up other people and people deserve to be conquered. And one is a winner and one is a loser, which is completely non-spiritual because to me, spirituality is about unity and having empathy and compassion. So I love that Joseph Campbell talked about the hero's journey and the archetypes of that, Jungian archetypes. And Joseph Campbell talked about, he wrote books on how, you know, mythology type books on how all of the religions have a lot in common. So like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Some things about religion have been used as excuses for war and there's dogma and guilt and shame and all of this horrible stuff that religious people have been taught. That's the bad part. That's the, the dirty baby bathwater that we need to get rid of and use as fertilizer in the garden of life. <laughs> but the wisdom in religion whatever whatever is left whatever most religions agree upon is the wisdom and so i will say that i love that bernie sanders said do unto others what you would have them do to you in other words treat others the way you would like to be treated and he says that in most religious uh wisdom ancient writings and teachings it boils down to that one truth which is that we are all connected on this planet. And so to me, spirituality is about feeling connected. And to me, I find God when I'm out in nature. Like, I don't really believe in God, like a man in the sky who judges and looks down on humans. I don't, I don't believe in that kind of a God. I feel in my heart a love for nature, a love for plants and animals and fellow human beings, a love for planet earth in the solar system a love for the diversity that i see in nature the diversity that i i feel inside my own heart when i do my art when i listen to music when i when i pet my cat i i have a cat i really really love animals and i'm very close to my cat i've had many cats in my lifetime so far that i'm very close to so to me bernie sanders reminded me of joseph campbell when he talks about what connects all of religions and even if you're an atheist or agnostic you could still use the, you could still buy into the principle of treat others the way you want to be treated in other words what you do comes back to you so if there's somebody hurting in the street it's sad and can you really be happy knowing that there are other people that are suffering so much and so there are extremely wealthy people and extremely poor people and some people in between but we're all connected. So I love that Bernie Sanders talked about his sort of spirituality or religious philosophy is that do unto others what you would have them do to you. So in other words, treat others the way you want to be treated. That seems pretty smart to me. And I just wanted to say that my art is my spiritual practice. And when I'm out in nature, I feel a sense of God or great spirit, but I wasn't raised religious. I was raised by a very agnostic father and a very Zen Buddhist 
Hinduism, non-duality, Eastern mystic philosophy type of a mother. Long story on that. But my parents also thankfully taught me to think for myself and question everything. So thankfully they didn't tell me that I should or shouldn't agree with their their idea about what God is or what God is not. My dad is very agnostic, but he's not really an atheist because he kind of knows that he can't really know for sure that there's nothing like when we die, that's it. Everything goes black versus does consciousness continue? So that's, that's a hot topic right there. But I just think that um, another reason why I love Bernie Sanders is because of what he said about that. And he, he cares about poor people and regular people, and he wants rich people to pay their fair share of taxes. In other words, don't hoard all the money. It seems like in the United States, we reward people for becoming wealthy and we punish people for being poor and it should be the opposite not that we should punish people for being poor for being wealthy but we should help people out that are extremely poor especially if they're trying to get on their feet even if they're not trying to get on their feet we should probably help people but because if people are happy they usually don't just sit around and do nothing or you know whatever i think generally human beings respond well when they when you treat them well and I think that wealthy corporations and even churches should pay their fair I think churches don't even pay anything in tax which is really kind of strange to me but I feel like wealthy corporations and wealthy individuals should pay their fair share of taxes and not hoard the money and maybe we shouldn't reward people so heavily for being extremely wealthy. I mean, no wonder a lot of people want to chase after wealth, knowing that they have to pay lower taxes, knowing, oh, if I get really rich, then my taxes will be even lower. You know, that just makes people want to become extremely wealthy and hoard even more money. And they get rewarded for hoarding money, basically. So it's kind of like we need to flip that on, on its head and do the opposite. You know, encourage people to work and achieve their goals, knowing that they can afford to have a place to eat and sleep and they can have a well, a good paying job. So whatever. So my spirituality is nature and art. When I, when I, when I'm out with plants and animals and I enjoy nature and I smell and feel natural plants and animals in the whole ecosystem. And I feel like I'm part of the ecosystem as a human I'm also kind of a nudist and a naturist sometimes. Mostly I'm a nude model, but I'm very comfortable being nude and I've been to naturist gatherings and I'm out in nature. And to me, that's a very spiritual feeling, meaning that I feel connected to that which is beyond myself, plants, animals, other humans, the universe in general. Um, so society can be enriched and enhanced and improved if people were to treat each other the way they want to be treated because most people don't want to be abused and treated horribly and I know there are crazy people in the world who are very angry and want to do crazy fanatical things that's probably true but I think a majority of people aren't even like that so I don't believe in focusing on being afraid of people that are dangerous I think the best thing to do to counteract all the horrible things in the world is to build up the positive things in the world be the change you want to see as is a Gandhi who said that so okay spirituality nature uh, yeah so I just another reason why I love Bernie Sanders is because of what he said about his spiritual beliefs which is that we're all connected and when I hurt you hurt and when you hurt I hurt therefore we should have a more socialized democracy which kind of doesn't let capitalism go so amok and go so crazy I mean there should not be for capitalism has no place in healthcare. you know healthcare should be a nonprofit social service that everybody gets but just by paying their taxes like it is in most other countries and the same with public universities and colleges the same with um just a basic like mass transit you know we could have such better mass transit in the united states like high-speed trains like really good trains everybody chips in we pay that we cut down the military budget and we and we increase the taxes on the wealthy the corporations and the ind individuals that can afford higher taxes we take that money and we make healthcare care nonprofit and take away all the waste all the waste all the money that's being wasted 
and we don't let pharmaceutical and drug companies jack the prices way, way, way up. They don't do that in other countries. In the UK, uh, medical companies are rewarded for keeping costs down. In the United States, it seems like people are rewarded for jacking the price up and making more of a profit. So if you put profit above humans, that's really not a good idea. It's very, it makes people very competitive and it makes people all want to climb to the top and get rich as if they're going to be happy if they're rich. But the thing is, if it's really competitive and everybody's working hard and stressed out, that's not, that's not going to bring you any kind of happiness. So I wish we had a more socialized democracy and I wish people would treat others the way they want to be treated. So in other words, pay your workers a good, a good rate of pay and don't be so greedy yourself. And would you want a boss that makes 5,000 dollars an hour and then you make 10 bucks an hour. I mean, some people make 10 bucks an hour. Some people make $5,000 an hour or a minute. Does anybody need $5,000 a minute or an hour? Probably not. So I'm all for capitalism and people becoming entrepreneurs and making money if that's what they want to do, but they should have to pay their fair share of taxes. And a CEO in a company should have to pay their lower end workers a fair wage and not a slave labor type wage. So that to me is all about spirituality as well. Because if you treat others the way you want to be treated, then you don't want to treat somebody like a slave because nobody wants to be treated like a slave. In other words, paid really low salary and not get any vacation or paid time off or not get a very good lunch break. I mean, come on, everybody needs rest and play, time with family, time with friends, time to relax, balance that out with work. Everybody deserves health care. Everybody deserves education if they want it. Everybody deserves a good mass transit. I mean, come on. There should be rent control. Like there should be federal regulations. In my opinion, there should be federal regulations that help society function better, which is nonprofit health care, which is nonprofit university, which is uh, higher wages, unions thriving and healthy so that workers can get paid time off, enough vacation, enough breaks, and more income equality, more extreme people at wealthy at the top. There should be more of a gradual, you know, instead of 10 bucks an hour versus $500 an hour, there should be some, you know, 20 bucks an hour at the bottom, and then maybe you know, $100 an hour, 200, 300, 400, $500 an hour. I don't know. It should just more gradually go up instead of extreme poor, extreme rich. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm getting tired, but yeah. So to me, that's all connected to spirituality because if you treat others the way you want to be treated, then you're going to treat them better. Because if, if we feel connected, then when we rip somebody off, we're going to feel like we're ripping ourselves off. So I really do think that society would work. People would be so much happier in the United States if we had some of these socialized democratic policies in place and they were enforced. It seems now people say less government. I don't want less government. I want different government. I want ethical government. I want an actual democratic government, not a capitalist government, not a government run by corporations but a government who regulates corporations, you know, a government who says, Hey, you can't rip people off. Hey, you have to pay your taxes. Hey, you have to give everybody health care. Hey, you can't, you're, we're not going to reward you anymore for being a money hoarder, basically for embezzling money from society. We're going to reward you for doing the right thing and paying your workers well. And yeah, you know what I mean? Like having a socialized democracy mixed with some capitalism. There should be regulations that stop things from getting too corrupt and out of control and obviously take big money out of politics. It's sad to me that whoever has the most money has more of a chance of winning in the United States. It's like, what is this? A game show? Like this is like real life. This is politics. This is like real life. This isn't just some football game or some, you know, sporting event. This is like real people's lives here. This is like people's living situation, people's jobs, people's family, people's children, people's futures. This is like people's lives at stake here. 
and we should be taking better care of each other and not letting rich people hoard all the money. And I know that not all wealthy people are jerks. There are some wealthy people. I think Warren Buffett or somebody who's extremely wealthy said, I can pay a lot more taxes. Like, go ahead, tax me more. I mean, there are some wealthy people who would happily pay higher taxes because they can afford it. And it's not going to hurt them. They're still going to be extremely wealthy. It's not going to make them poor at all. So, so people are afraid of scarcity, so they think they can't afford to pay tax. But uh, people can afford to pay more taxes, and I would even pay higher taxes if I knew that I was getting socialized health care, you know, and I didn't have to worry about medical bills. I would pay higher taxes if I knew that I could go to a doctor and whatever I needed, I wouldn't get like some huge bill, you know. So, in other countries, in like Scandinavia and different European countries I've been to, people do pay slightly higher taxes, but it's not as high as what we're told. I've asked my friends how much they pay in taxes, and it's not as high as what we're told. I don't remember the exact number, but they get paid higher wages equivalent to what I get paid. And taxes get automatically taken out of their paycheck, and they can go see a doctor, and no, there's no bill. So that's very different, and it's it's like it makes life a lot less stressful if you don't have to worry about medical bills or huge college, college tuition bills. That makes life a lot less stressful. So there, I just wanted to say that. So there we go. Spirituality, Bernie Sanders, Joseph Campbell, what me, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, thinks about all that. So yeah, I think that... Um, being ethical and being a socialized democracy mixed with the capitalism is a more higher spirituality, a more spiritual way of life, which means spirituality to me means that we're all connected, that rich and poor and middle class and plants and animals and the whole ecosystem is connected. And we all use the mass, well, a lot of us use mass transit. We all use the roads, whether we're walking or riding a bike, driving a car, or taking a mass transit bus. We, most people do share the road. So we should take good care of our bridges, our infrastructure, our roads, our mass transit, you know, our educational system, our healthcare system. We all use that. You know, the public library is one of my favorite places. You go to the library and there's rich people. Well, I don't know how many rich people go there. Sadly, I've, I, what I see in the public libraries in Seattle is a lot of people that seem really poor that go in there to hang out because it's a free place to hang out. But thank God it exists. You know, the library, you can go and use a computer. If you don't have a home computer, you can go use the library. Computers for free. They have a public restroom. They have books and, you know, I mean, the library is an amazing place. And to me, I would consider the public library a socialist organization, meaning it's a nonprofit, free to the public. Everyone gets to use the library, whether you're rich or poor or young or old or middle class, middle aged, you know, little kindergartners all the way up to people in their 90s you know, to middle age. Everyone can come to the library and enjoy books and music and computers and just a, a place to hang out that doesn't require you to spend money. I mean, it's a very nice, the library is an amazing place. And I wish we had a healthcare system that was like the library in a way. You know what I mean? Like everyone can, can benefit from it. So that, to me, that's a spiritual way to run a society is more like that. And then the capitalism can be mixed in with a socialized democracy. So in other words, socialized democracy or democratic socialism, whatever you want to call it, helps regulate capitalism to keep the greed from getting out of hand because people get carried away. People want to hoard money because they become wealthy and it's exciting and they just want more wealth. Well, if they had to pay higher taxes, maybe they wouldn't be quite so um, chasing after the money. Maybe they'd be like, well, I'm rich enough because if I make another $5 million, I'll have to pay a lot more in tax. So maybe it's better if I just, maybe I'm rich enough already, you know? And if lower end workers were paid more and their taxes went down a little, if, you know what I mean? Because the, the low, the poor and the middle class pay a higher percentage of their income in tax than the wealthy. And that's the opposite of what it should be. So to me, democratic socialism helps regulate capitalism because capitalism is a little out of control in the United States at this point. You know, the, the poverty is, is increasing. The wealthy people are getting more and more wealthy 
the poor people are getting more and more poor. There's more and more people homeless. I mean, it's really scary and sad to see this. I mean, there's more and more people that have several jobs that have to go to thrift stores. I mean, I already do the thrift store and the food bank. I've, I've been low income my whole life. I don't even know what it's like to be wealthy, actually. I've never been wealthy or even middle class. I come from kind of a low income background, so I don't even know what it's like, but I can just imagine that if people were paid more and wealthy people and corporations had to pay higher taxes, it's just more of an equal way. And it's not communism. Communism is a little too extreme for me where everybody's kind of poor. To me, democratic socialism is more of an equal distribution of wealth. And then if you have a business or an entrepreneur type situation, you can make money and you can be wealthier than the other people who don't want to work like that. You know, if somebody is content just being middle class or lower income, that's fine. But they shouldn't have to suffer and live in, in hideous poverty. You know, if you work full time, you shouldn't be extremely poor. If you if you're working, you should you should be okay and have food and shelter and just basic necessities. And then if you want to if you want to have your own business and make lots of money, you should still be able to allow to do that. So to me socialized democracy or democratic socialism mixed with capitalism should should be should create a balance you know and a harmony that's what i'm trying to say so thanks for listening i am goddess kring shannon kringen uh here's some of my artwork on my cell phone but it's black and white so it might be hard to see but that's a collage i did of selfies of myself <laughs> and my book is right here Art, Identity, and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen. I self-published this. It's on my website. And just go to my website, shannonkringen.com, if you're curious about my artwork. I do photography and shoe painting. And this is my tattoo that means be yourself no matter what they say. Be yourself no matter what they say. It's part of a sting song I like called Englishman in New York. So I am me and I'm 47 left-handed Scorpio earth monkey. There it is. Only child, sort of an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert. You know, like I like a lot of time to myself. I like a lot of solitude. I love plants and animals. And yet I like to make these videos and share them with people. And I, I have like five blogs and a Flickr and a Twitter and a Facebook and just tons and tons of different things I share online and I'm just learning as I go. So check out my website, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-K-R-I-N-G-E-N, ShannonKringen.com. That's where I link everything. I'm on Instagram now too. That's a new thing. I'm on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and uh, Tumblr, LinkedIn, WordPress, um, live journal. I have my own website. I mean, I'm all over and it's just really fun to share. And um, there it is. So I hope that you find me inspiring in some way or uplifting or that I encourage you to like do your thing, whatever that is, like follow your bliss, do what you love and build it up and spread whatever message you want to spread or not. If you don't want to spread a message, just be quiet and don't do that. But do whatever makes you happy. That's kind of my message is do what you love and see where that takes you. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.